Hey everybody, Steve from the Pinball Room, coming at you one more time for yet another installment about RGB, LED, insert lighting, and the best way to go through and diffuse them. We're going to experiment around with a couple more, um, well, one specific solution today that the, the last videos I think were great. I feel like I made really good progress. I feel like I came up with a solution that was working good. And I, I like the results of it. But the final implementation was going to be a little bit more tedious and reliant on a laser engraver slash cutter down my makerspace, which is far away. And Anyway, there were so many great comments um, to all of those videos. The last one in particular, though, um, several of you brought up some really good points that I didn't really cover as well as I probably should have because I'm still figuring it all out. So I want to touch on those to make sure everybody gets a chance to hear and learn from that. And then I'm going to go through and play around with another idea that was presented by Paul Stevenson that's similar to kind of where I ended up but it involves a 3D printer as opposed to like the laser cutter down in my maker space. And so I'm, I'm more excited about being able to have a solution that I can kind of do all in the comfort of my home versus having to drive down to the maker space and back and forth. And anyway, so, so I, I, let's just get right into that. All right. So in the last couple of videos where I had ended up was going through and using a piece of one eighth inch thick opaque acrylic plastic. I had a sheet of it. I was going to go through and cut it out. And with the, with the laser engraver, I was going to make a, um, an illustrator file and, and have it to where I could go down to my maker space and cut out a shape that basically would match like the insert that I want to be lighting with maybe like a little like tab. If you can see that here, this is kind of my rough drawing. Like, oh, I'll do like a square with like a little leg with a little hole for a screw. And then that will just be able to like go right up underneath the insert screwed into the field with the LED board right underneath that. And I thought that was going to work great. And I was getting good results. Here's a couple of things now that in discussions I have with Paul and with several of you in the comments afterwards, I failed to really talk about the importance of just the distance of the LED from the insert. I don't think we covered that very much. I might have mentioned it in passing, but based on the comments, eh, maybe I didn't at all. That's an important factor. Like it kind of makes sense, right? It's common sense. Um, or at least when someone says it out loud, I recognize it, right? So let's say we have one of our little LED light boards, right? And it's this little guy here, right? And this is where the light emitting diode is. Well, the distance from the insert, right, is going to make a big deal. If I put the, the light right against it, like right up on the wood to where it's like right against it, um, that hot spot's not going to naturally be worse. It's going to be exaggerated because it's just, it's so close, right? The more we just start to pull it away, the more the light naturally just becomes diffused, right? Just because of the space between it, right? But it also loses its, its brightness. It also will start to light up other inserts around it. So we still, you know, we got we have to find a way to make it when this LED lights up, only this insert lights up. And without having like long like shades underneath, things that would get in the way of the play fields, like how do we do this? So what's the right happy medium between having an LED that's gonna be there and be bright and light up but not be so close and non diffuse that it just creates nothing but it's just a burning hot spot because I don't like that. I don't wanna see, oh, the LED is definitely like on this front portion of the triangle and the other inserts over here, or are there two? Like I want us to have a nice, bright, even glow as much as possible. And that opaque, white acrylic was doing a pretty good job of doing that. Now for me, that thick opaque acrylic worked when I had this up pretty darn close to the acrylic because it was so opaque and so thick. As soon as I started to pull it away, not enough of it was coming through. Now that's good because it allows me to put the LED plastic or the LED and the plastic right up close to the insert to where there's not going to be much spillover. The light's not going to be going through and, and hitting other inserts really, right? So that's a bonus. The con is just it's it's expensive acrylic. This one, eight, um, I mean, it's not insanely expensive, but it's not like the cheapest plastic out there. I do have to go through and use like a laser cutter of some sort to cut that thick one eighth, one eighth inch thick acrylic to the right size and shape. Okay, um, so I want to experiment with other ways to go about that. A couple of you mentioned about you know, see, there's also options instead of these clear inserts. Why don't you use some of the white opaque inserts? And I went through, and I bought a bunch of those. I finally found a decent number of them back in stock on Pinball Life. Couldn't find every size and shape, but I found a good number. So I got circles, I got diamonds, um, I got these arrows like from Ghostbusters. So I, I got a bunch of them, but, and it looks pretty much like that opaque acrylic that I was working with before. How did they look? They looked pretty good. They did naturally diffuse the lighting. This was not as much of an issue. I still need to, I, I, I couldn't do it like right against the insert. I still needed to have it a little bit of a standoff, but getting little plastic spacers to stand off to the LEDs is not hard. So this could be a great, viable, simple solution. It doesn't really require any other intermediary diffuser and it works pretty good. My issue with this 
is depending on the artwork that's covering the play field, the majority of the inserts, I don't want them to be white by default. I just don't. It's just not the subjective, it's not subjectively, it's not the look I'm going for. I want these to kind of recede and just kind of fade away with the artwork around a little bit more. Now, there will be parts of the artwork, I'm sure, that will maybe even, you know, cover part of an insert, right? If we're doing Led Zeppelin across the center of the play field, we're going to have probably just kind of like a bunch of inserts that are then kind of masked off by the artwork to say to spell Led Zeppelin, right? And so there will be parts where I can use the white insert, for the, but for the majority of them, I don't want that white. Um, but again, it's just subjective. So for me, it's still kind of like a... Eh, it's a decent option. Aesthetically, I don't think it's really what I want for the majority of my inserts at least. So I went back to, okay, what's gonna be the best way to light a clear insert and have it diffused appropriately, right? And still work with all the different colors. So this is where Paul Stevenson's idea came in, which is what I wanna to try today. He sent me a file, well, he sent me an email with lots of examples of what he did. Then he sent me an STL file that he used on his 3D printer for this little doohickey, okay? So what this is, is a simple little item that has legs and has an area that's gonna be the lens that the light will go through, it's really thin. He did this at like 0.2 millimeters. It's very very thin and flimsy. If I hold it up to a bright light, I can, like to my ceiling lights, I can see the light coming through it just barely, right? And that's far away. So what he said he did is he took his light boards and he's got some custom um, LED boards that I think that he's made on his own or bought somewhere else, I think he's made them. And Basically, it just kind of sits in here like this and gets held. So the screw goes in here, and then this part gets held in between these little legs. Now, his wasn't made for my board, so I printed it out. It doesn't really fit my LED board, okay? The ones I got from the guys over at Fast as part of my starter bundle. But I was able to take his file, and I can tell he knows a lot more about Fusion 360 than I did because he's using parameters in a very effective manner, which I haven't really got into yet. But that's another story. So I went through, and I created my own. This one now matches and works with my LED board. So now when I put it in, it actually holds it in the right place. Okay, so it's snug and custom fit for my little light board. And I have this measured out to where the LED is right smack in the center of this area. Okay, it's both off to one side. This is a one inch round circle, so it matches the, you know, the one inch insert we have, right? Exact same size and everything. But the idea is, let's say, here's my round insert of my play field, I would take this and be able to, like, to screw it off to one side and have it cover that, and then we light it up from underneath. Okay, Whoop. and it would be the right size, it would match that insert. So that's what I wanna to try today. I did these in two different thicknesses. I did them in a 0.2 millimeter and a 0.3. I'm pretty sure the 0.3, Paul is correct, that the 0.3 is gonna be a little too thick. His 0.2, just looking at the differences between mine, again, I hold a 0.2 up, I see the light. I hold a 0.3 up, and I mean, it's there, but it's, it's definitely much more occluded. So we're gonna try them both and see. The 0.3, I'm betting it's gonna block too much light, but the 0.2 millimeter thickness, I'm I'm hopeful. I made a couple of different sizes here. I've gone through, I've got a couple that are, these are like half inch ones, little tiny ones. But this is one of my questions also of, right here, this has, a, um, a standoff depth of 10 millimeters, I believe is where we're at. I gotta double check, maybe it's eight. Pretty sure it's 10. And I'll put it on, on the screen if it's different, but 10 millimeters, I've gone through and labeled these. I've got one that says, you know, says 0.2, the other one says 0.3 for the thickness, so I know which one's which. And I've got a half inch, and I've got the two one inch ones, also the two variations. Um, I'm curious, like, do I need to go through and create a lens here that's the size and the shape for each one of these inserts? because it'll just kind of like, you know, fill this area and glow, or can I use a circle underneath one of my, my triangles? Ideally, I'd want to just like a single size and shape underneath for all of them, just for simplicity, right? And for like, just kind of printing out a bunch of these. Um, but I might need to go through and print out one that is a circle, another one's a square, another one's a rectangle to make sure I really get the glow the way, the way that I want. So we're gonna have to test that a little bit also. All right, so without further ado, let's get into it. We're gonna play around at at this, at this distance, okay, about the 10 millimeters, and with this size, or with this thickness of a lens, and let's hook it up and let's see what we get. So I've got some of my LEDs here. Now I'm putting a little screw in here, just kind of help hold the board in place, and we'll test what we get. I've got my laptop set up over here, connected to my, going in. <laughs> Making sure I'm wiring these correctly so I'm burning more out. Okay. 
We got a couple of these here. Two we'll be able to test. I've got them wired. My laptop, my uh, my Mac laptop here, my, one of my dev computers, is connected down into my Nano where I have in the back of my cabinet still. I've got that cool term app set up. If you remember that from the other video, it's a free terminal emulator, but it allows us to connect to um, the different ports that the Nano uh, manages. And one of them is for the RGB channels for the LEDs. And we get inside there. Once we know we're connected, that's all covered in the other video. I can start doing controls to go through and change the color of, um, of all of my LEDs. Like if we want to start out simple and we'll go red, FF0000. Bingo, apparently I had a little bit of a shorter delay there. But now we've got these ones coming out red and you see both these circles glowing. I'm gonna turn off some lights so we get some better lighting and get the camera in closer. All right, so which one's which here? I wrote on it, but now it's so dark I can't read my writing. All right, so this one I'm shaking has a 0.3 millimeter thickness of a lens. This one has 0.2. Just here in the camera, I don't know if you can see much of a difference. Looking at it here in, in real life, it's subtle. <laughs> it's subtle. I see. I do see a little bit more from the point two. It's, it's a subtle difference. All right. So I've got just a single LED in my chain here lit up. And we're going to start first without any sort of lens over it. Okay. And we'll see how that looks. Just raw. Um, we'll, we'll start first right on the wood, right below it. And then we'll do it with this spacer. See how much that different dis distance helps. And then we'll go through third and we'll actually put it um, with this lens um, around it and we'll see how that changes things all right so first just the raw LED up close all right raw LED right at the height distance of the wood very clear hot spot you can see it moving around okay now let's say just the LED at the distance of that standoff okay still pretty hot, pretty clear hot spot right there all right, all right. Now with the lens in between it, let's see how this looks. No hot spot. <laughs> I mean, we know there's no hot spot because there's really no hot spot just with the naked lens itself, right? Now the question is, is that too dim? I want a comparison now of one raw and one with the lens. All right, so what I've gone through and done now is I've screwed them both onto the board. So how you can see that. One has a lens diffuser and the other one is just straight the LED. There's nothing in between it. So we're gonna be able to see a very clear hot spot compared to with the lens. All right. Okay, I'm looking at it here, and yeah, you see the hot spot in this one. With it being in the center of that round one, I mean, it's not too horrible, but as far as just general brightness compared to the other one, it seems pretty close to me. Let's try some other colors. Let's try the blue we like. Zero, zero, one, AFF, comma, Zero six zero zero one A F F. There we go. Now they're both blue, both pretty bright. This one with the diffuser, the lens diffuser is definitely glowing and fusing better than I thought it would. See here, you see that hot spot moving around, depending depending on exactly where that LED is, right? It's like kind of swinging around. You can see the hot spot moving and light diffracting differently. Or the other one, there's no change. It just looks good no matter what. Actually, so I'm definitely liking with the diffuser better than just raw. So now what I want to check out is, let's see if we can see the difference between the 0.3 and the 0.2. How are we looking here? So 0.3 on the left, 0.2 on the right. Hmm. I want to say it might just be a tiny bit brighter. 
at the point two, which I mean would make sense. And we're all about going with what's brightest. So yeah, I think we're gonna go with the point two. Okay, now the other question I have, right, is regarding the size of the diffuser. Both of these are the full one inch diffusers right now. I'm gonna try it for one of these smaller guys on still the large insert and just see, do we see a clear edge? That's what I'm anticipating that we're gonna kinda, we'll see some sort of a natural fall off or something like where it glows and where it doesn't, but let's, let's just take a look. Okay, so what I've got set up now, let's see if you can see this, is over the one inch hole, I've just got this half inch diffuser, okay? And so my guess is that this is not gonna look like a hot spot, but we're still gonna very noticeably see the edge of that and it will not look as good as the other one that has a full diffuser, but let's, let's not guess, let's test it and see. Oh yeah, it almost kinda looks like a miniature hot spot, huh? <laughs> like, it's not hot, but you definitely can see where, where the edge of the diffuser is versus like this one that is just fully lit. Okay, so definitely need to have a diffuser that is about as large as the insert. These small guys will be good in tight spaces for the small inserts that they fit, but otherwise, nope. So again, you can see I've got this kind of covering like the primary area, which is where I think, you know, we kind of expect it to be. And let's see how easily we can kind of see the diffused edge here. Try green this time. Oh yeah, no, that's, <laughs> that's way too obvious. <laughs> All right, it's way too obvious. You can totally see the unlit spot versus the lit area. This diffuser kind of makes it look curved in here instead of round, but still, yeah, that's, that's, that's not what we want, is it? So we need a diffuser that is the full shape. Now the big test is gonna be printing one for this guy here, like in Ghostbusters, has these long legs. If I print one, that's a whole thing. I'm still gonna have my LED kind of shine like in the center. Is it really gonna like carry through the plastic? It won't be a sharp line like this of no illumination, but are we gonna see a strong, is there gonna be a big difference between how bright it is over here versus how bright is the edge of the legs? Will I need to have multiple LEDs to really get the even lighting? Will I need to have, you know, like three? Um, do I need to have two down here for this size? Um, that's, that's gonna be the question we're gonna look at. Obviously we want to have it look good, but I don't want to have to do like an insane number of LEDs because that's just that many more LEDs to be trying to wire and to program and I mean expenses out the door at this point, right? It's a homebrew. We're just, we're what, like around $4,800 invested so far into this. So what's another 50 bucks on some extra LEDs? <laughs> now mostly it's more just about the, the how we have to chain them. There's a certain number per chain to make sure we get adequate um, uh, power along the way. Um, Anyway, just adds a little bit more. The more LEDs we have, just a little bit more work, but yeah, we'll do what we need to do. All right, so the next part, I'm gonna go through and hurry and print out a diffuser in the shape of this Ghostbuster arrow, and it's gonna be one of the most telling ones, and yeah, we'll see how that lights up. All right, here we are, we're back, and uh, here is the diffuser for that funky looking uh, arrow. Right now, I've got the base just coming out the bottom, the only tricky thing with all this is going to be like if I go through and put inserts in the game then realize I need to have the light come from like the side or different angle then I'll have to make ones with you know with the with the brace coming off from the specific side so that will be fun all right we got this one screwed down here in place or the other one now I'll go through and test it and see how well it diffuses nice bright blue all right moment of truth we're going to lift it up so actually I'll show you sets that's how it's looking from behind, all right? It's glowing. Right now, I already can tell it seems kind of dark on those back feet. We'll see, it's probably gonna need multiple LEDs. So everybody says, yeah, it does, it is kind of, my arm out of the way, it is kind of carrying that light all the way through. Not bad, oh, I need the insert, haha. <laughs> but even right there without the insert, just the diffuser, you can see it's, it's too dark on these feet. I tried to kind of center, bring it back a little bit, and it's just not, yeah, it's there, but the feet, like I can, yeah. I think this setup, we're gonna need something where we can have three LEDs. I'll move this one further forward a little bit, and then two for the feet. But I mean, it's, it's honestly a little bit better than what I thought it was gonna be. So, 
not bad, not bad for a try. But yeah, let's try and even right away. The nice thing is you, we're not seeing that harsh line, right? Like look, look at the one below. Let's turn on the one below, right? Like at least we're not seeing that. Again, I need the insert. <laughs> keep taking them out because they keep falling out. But there we go. Still definitely looking better than that, right? So we don't see that immediate harsh fall off at the edge of the, of the diffuser. It's just kind of fading off. Actually works pretty decent for the whole front half. It's just, it's not bleeding through on these feet enough. But I think that's pretty much kind of proving the principle though, right? Uh, we need a, a whole piece diffuser, either the shape of the insert or can kind of cover that whole area. And for these really funky ones where the fall is just a little too great, we might need multiple LEDs. Again, no surprise, I already knew I was probably gonna need to have multiple LEDs if I use this type of insert. Now for me, I'm gonna be using these, um, this arrow, the diamonds, the squares, the triangles. Um, I will be using some of these. So I'm also gonna go through and I think do a quick test with this shape. I should have printed one of those off already. I tried the hardest one. I'm gonna try one of these shapes, but it's a single LED, see how it goes. I wonder if it's gonna work well with one or if I'm gonna need like two, yeah, I'm hoping I can get this one to look really good with just one LED, but we'll see. All right, that'll be the next test. All right, so here we are. We've got one now in the shape of the arrow. We're gonna screw it down and give it a try. All right, got them both turned out in green. And let's take a look at this. So there they are, just with the diffusers. And now we'll get the inserts in place. Seems like that's lighting up pretty well the whole thing though so again this is the same one on that guy we know we need LEDs in the back and then for that guy see I'm rotating a little bit the LED you can kind of tell a little bit of a shift but not too much I feel like it fills that whole thing pretty good I almost want to say it doesn't fill the front quite as much but that looks pretty good to me let's try another color let's try a brighter color as that whole thing is definitely light, lighting up with the red. You can definitely tell it. I think that's good. Yeah, I'm liking that. Okay. All right, so this is all looking pretty good, pretty promising. Um, but it wouldn't be complete, this test. We didn't go back through and compare it again against the actual um, opaque acrylic that I did before that I really liked the look of. So let's go through and compare these 3D printed white diffusers with the white acrylic. That's one eighth, one eighth inch thick and let's Let's compare and see which one looks better in the end because this is good and convenient, but maybe we get a better result from this. Let's, I haven't compared the two, so let's take a look. So I've got one using the diffuser. The other one's using the bracket, but it's turned around, so it's, it's completely bare to the wood right now. We're going to slide this in between. That way they're the same height, okay? They're both 10, 10 millimeters above. Now this is thicker, so technically it's closer, but that's as scientific as we're going to get for right now. <laughs> A 10 millimeter standoff against a 1 8 inch opaque acrylic or a 0.2 millimeter um, forced opacity um, white PLA printed diffuser. All right, so there we go. We can see the hot spot pretty clearly there, right? No diffuser, hot spot, clear hot spot. Whoop, diffuser in place. All right, that's as even of a shadow as I can cast here from the lights, but again, for me, it looks, I mean, they look pretty much identical in how they're diffusing, which is good, which means I don't have to use the expensive acrylic. <laughs> All right, I think we're done for today. So to me, I'm convinced. Um, I don't see any real noticeable difference between using the thicker and more expensive opaque acrylic that I have to cut out to shape versus 3D modeling and 3D printing out using um, a thin two layer 0.1 millimeter for each layer, so a total of 0.2 millimeters thick um, white PLA plastic printed diffuser is working just as well. I can go through and I can customize the shape and exactly where I want like the mounting bracket and hardware. And this allows us to work with like these special shaped ones like this long arrow reminiscent of Ghostbusters. We'll be able to have a custom made bracket that will allow for three LEDs, one for the main, main area and then two more for the legs so it's equally lit everywhere. Um, that'll be easy to go through and do in Fusion 360. And yeah, so that's what I think I'm gonna end up doing. I'll go, I'm gonna go through, no definitely, I'm gonna go through and I will create brackets that work 
I'm using, again, the LED, RGB LEDs that come with the starter kit bundle from Fast. So if you buy that kit, like I know many of you have, um, uh, I will make sure that the STL files I put up on my public drive for each one of these shapes that I'm doing, I'll put them up there. You guys can download them, print them out. You can take them into Fusion. You can adjust them. Um, it's not, I mean, if you're familiar with, with Fusion, it will not be hard for you to adjust the little legs I have that support and, and hold this little um, circuit board to be a little bit wider or skinnier based on the circuit board you're using. So even if you're not using the fast RGB LEDs, um, either with a little help from a friend if you don't use Fusion or these ones, anyway, you should be able to adapt them fairly easily and make them work. Anyway, so yeah, um, I got to go through and print out the custom shapes for each of the inserts I'm going to be doing. So I'll be doing that over the next few days. And uh, by the time I get this video up, they should be up on my public drive. Um, if not, I'll put something in the video right here, but I think they should all be up on the drive. Anyway, available for you all to go through and download and use your own projects too, okay? So yeah, I'm really pleased. This is gonna allow me to go through and kind of print on demand the diffusers I need and the shapes I need and the quantity, quantity I need. Yeah, and I think we're getting really, really good results, as good as anything else I've been able to find. So there you go. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you haven't started your own pinball project, get on it. I know many of you have. It's been really exciting to see how many people have jumped on. They've been buying the Fast Starter Bundle. Still hoping to um, get a couple of those new boards myself so I can play around with them and do a review and kind of tell you a little bit more about why they're so awesome. But really excited for the new boards they have coming out as well. And anyway, yeah, um, great comments from everybody. Thank you so much. Excited to see how we go. Um, in the future, there's more and more people jumping on. So yeah, knock yourselves out. Have a lot of fun making pinball, guys. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.